Hey guys, so I lied to you in my last video. Here is how you actually lesson plan. If you've gone through like any TEFL certifications or taken actual education courses and learned pedagogy, then a lot of the stuff that I mentioned was kind of, may have seemed a little repetitive. Um, and that's because it was all of the things that I learned and people told me to do um, with like a few key things here and there that I learned myself. But overall, especially when talking about teaching in Korea, um, a lot of the times schedules will change very last minute. You kind of just have to roll with the punches. You may not have um, as many classes as you thought you would have or you might have way more classes than you thought you would have um, in a certain day, in a certain week. Um, you might have more or less students than you thought you were going to have uh, for a certain classes and you really just have to be very flexible and able to adapt really well. Um, and some of us just aren't like that. Uh, we can try and we can, you know, exercise being more flexible when it comes to planning and um, problem solving, but some of us just, you know, we struggle a little bit. And um, I feel like the things that I'm about to tell you are kind of going to help you if you do kind of struggle with being more flexible. Um, and it is one of those things that I feel like being a teacher or coming here and teaching English, if you really want to give it a go, um, you can really learn to hone the skill of being flexible and problem solving. When you first speak to your co-teacher, you should always ask them how many students you're going to have, what the class dynamic is like if they know this, um, what level the students are at, what they've learned if they know the curriculum of what they learned the pre in the previous years, then you should ask them that as well. Um, you should also ask, you know, how involved <laughs> your co-teacher is in your class because some of them will be up front and be like, I don't like teaching while you're teaching. Um, I would prefer to help the students or give you the space to just have an all English type of class. Um, and sometimes they won't be so upfront with you and you'll learn later on, but that should be okay. And that's something you really are gonna have to just like roll with the punches about. And the most important thing you wanna ask your co-teacher is, do you have the responsibility of assessing your students at the end of the semester? Ha will you or have previous NETs or native English teachers been responsible for assessments like speaking, listening, reading, um, writing <laughs> exams at the end of the semester? Um, when you ask them this, they should be pretty upfront with you from the beginning about whether or not you're going to have an assessment because they'll want to get a rubric from you as soon as possible within like the first two weeks of school so um that is something that is going to be really important to know so what i usually do because i do have a it tends in the past it's been speaking assessments is what i am in charge of doing with my middle and high school students so when it comes to my lesson planning Usually what I'll do is I will make the assessment first. I will make the end of the year assessment and then I will design the class structure. So because my classes have in the past not been the best when it comes to management, um, creating a class structure that the students can follow well I have been told works wonders. Um, I have not yet been able to test this out for myself because of the online courses that we had to go through last year, but this year is definitely going to be something that I try to incorporate. And, you know, I will first, so I feel like doing the assessment first helps you figure out what you want to allocate your time to do. Yeah, so you have your assessments and then you have you start planning your class structure, basic class structure, a basic opening that you're always gonna do, or a basic closing that you're always gonna do that kind of just helps the students always have a set 
practice that will benefit them in the future for their assessment. And then you you create worksheets. Create worksheets that use the same grammar, the same uh, vocabulary, the same maybe test structure as what your assessment will show the students. That way they get used to whatever it is that they're going to be doing at the end of the semester and the content in it can essentially be whatever the content is going to be in the final assessment but worded differently or scrambled up or like certain words are taken from here or there and they because they're going to constantly be doing this over and over again in different worksheets they'll naturally be able to do better at the assessment when you do the final assessment um, and when it comes to games if you want to do games with them you can again use the content from the final assessment to fuel your games and any other activities that you decide to do um, but yeah making the assessment is essentially like the very first thing that you want to do then create a class structure and then start to create the materials that you'll need for the students to be able to do well on that final assessment and the way that this kind of helps when it comes to um, being more flexible is if you have the assessment already set up and one day the your co-teacher is tells you, hey, you actually don't have class today, um, then the next time around, you kind of will have a little less to stress about because you'll already have the materials and stuff made if you initially do the assessment. And when you find, and if you find that things are getting a little bit too difficult for the students, then you might want to talk to your co-teacher about changing the um, the rubric or the actual ending assessment so that your students will be able to do well on it but, <laughs> but that is something that again you will have to figure out after maybe a few weeks or a few classes of being with your students and you realize what their actual learning <laughs> levels are. Um, even if you don't end up liking the idea of being a teacher and want to leave after a year, I hope that you still try uh, with your kids and, you know, create some type of connection with them so that your whole day isn't a complete bore. Um, and <laughs> also, hopefully you know everything settles down and you can enjoy yourself in this beautiful country that you're coming to so yeah um welcome to those coming to korea and i'll see you guys in my next video bye we had an agreement you got greedy then you double back that's a no no how you thought you'd get away with that if you switching up i might have